Uh, I think uh, in the visual above my head, we have uh, what are called the terrestrial planets. These are the planets that have surfaces you can walk on, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. Uh, the moon is also shown there, which looks quite small, but something to know about our moon is that it's one of the largest moons in the solar system. So even most of the moons of Jupiter and Saturn are dwarfed by the size of our moon. We have an uncommonly large moon relative to us, in spite of how small that looks. So the point I want to make here is Pluto, people, we have history here with Pluto in this institution. Mm -hmm. uh, and back in 2000, when we opened the Rose Center for Earth and Space, we were kind of the first out of the box to reassociate Pluto's identity from the company of planets to the icy, uh, the dirty ice balls in the outer solar system, uh, the Kuiper Belt. And so we were sort of raked over the coals by the press saying, and especially little kids, say, you know, third angry, pissed off third graders <laughs> saying, how could you possibly, just because it's small, how could you do that? And they're thinking that size was an issue. And in fact, it, it had much less to do with size than you might imagine. Uh, if we just go to the next slide here, what do we have? So now we have the gas giants, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, relative to a segment of the sun. And then you get to see how small Earth is relative to the rest of the action there, because Earth is included in this for scale. So here's a point I'll make, and I don't get to make this often enough, that Jupiter is more bigger <laughs> compared to Earth than Earth is compared to Pluto. Okay, I don't know how else to conjugate those verbs in that <laughs> sentence, but does it make sense to you, all right? So in other words, if we're on Earth saying, we're big enough to be a planet, but Pluto isn't, then imagine what Jovians could be saying. <laughs> They're saying the solar system has only four planets. Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, and everything else is just debris. So, so... <laughs> I'm certain all life forms of Jupiter are thinking exactly that way. So, so uh, you can't invoke size exclusively to, to dis Pluto uh, in this regard. But allow me to tell you that our moon as small as it was compared to Earth, has five times the mass of Pluto. Yeah, some people over here, yeah, so Pluto lovers never were told that, were you, <laughs> right? Yeah, so just welcome to the company of informed people, all right, <laughs> regarding Pluto. Uh, so, but we knew this. So, so th it, Pluto had other issues, and... Uh, uh, so after some thinking about this, uh, Pluto got demoted to a dwarf planet status on several grounds, one of which is that it orbits the sun in a region of the solar system where there's plenty of other stuff orbiting there, which in total dwarfs the mass of Pluto itself. So Pluto does not, uh, how would we call it, own its orbital place in the solar system. It's shared with countless thousands of other icy bodies that rival Pluto in, in, in size and composition. So what we really discovered was that Pluto really never was the planet we wanted it to be. In fact, it just went 60 years before we had discovered its icy brethren orbiting beyond Neptune. And these icy brethren we've named for uh, an astronomer at mid-century named Gerard Kuiper, who hypothesized that there could be this repository of excess debris that didn't participate in the formation of the rest of the planets. So uh, Pluto is a very healthy Kuiper Belt object, but a really lame planet. <laughs> <laughs>